going to bring you a crescendo here with um, favourite and least favourite. I haven't done a least favourite. Oh, okay, fine. But you've done favourites, right? Yeah, and these are in no particular order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I agree with a lot of the correspondents. So I have put in the creator. Okay, hang on. Let me just get my... my yes, yeah, so fine. Yep. Uh, I'm putting in Oppenheimer and Barbie because that was truly an incredible event. Plus, I thought they were both fantastic films. Barbie Heimer. Yes. Past Lives, Celine Sion came on the show, and Anatomy of a Fall, which I have seen since you... Uh, so you said, I think you'll like it, and I absolutely did like it. Isn't it just... Yes. Thought about it quite a lot, actually. Great. In, you know, afterwards. And also, uh, apart from the, the, the tip-top adult actors, the child actor is, is astonishing. And the dog... Is also astonishing. Yeah. So I would. So I'm not. I, I can't put them uh, five or three, two, one. But I, all of those would be uh, my favourite. Okay. So what do you think? Well, so here's what. So firstly, the 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 way that my list works is it's to do with films released in the UK yes. in 2023. So for example, when the emailer was referring to Brother 2022 film, but it opens in the UK in 2023, we've always done this because otherwise you just get lost around yes. the edges of things. That's fair enough. So firstly, let me tell you the films that didn't make my list but that I think were absolutely brilliant. And this is a long list because whenever people say, you know, cinema, it's not like it used to be. It's not as good as it used to be. Yeah. Okay. These are the films that I think were great that didn't make my top five list. Polite Society, How to Blow Up a Pipeline, The Beasts, Pearl, Close, Broker, Blue Jean, EO, May, December, Bo is Afraid, Infinity Pool, Rye Lane, Reality, Talk to Me, How to Have Sex, Scrapper, Dream Scenario, Saltburn, Bottoms, Eileen, St. Omer, and Women Talking. Those are the ones that didn't make the list. Now, I defy anyone to tell me that in a year in which those did not make the top five was not a cracking year. So here are my top five. Are these in, in order? Yes. Okay. Because I thought that that was what I was meant to do. So, fine. Okay. Fair enough. At number five, One Fine Morning. You interviewed Mia Hansen Lover, didn't you? Yes. About yes, One I Fine did. Morning. And you liked the film? Mia Hansen, uh, it was Mia Hansen Lover. It was spelled love, but didn't you say it was Lover? And now I've forgotten. Now you've forgotten. It was such an important thing to get a, to get a name right, and now I've forgotten. Anyway, I yes. believe that you said Mia Hansen okay. Lover. I, said, I think that's, that. that's what you said because I had always said Mia Hansen Love, but of course it's an O with a with, with a with, with a, a with a strike thing. through the middle yes. of it. So the thing, and I I believe that you said it was Mia Hansen Lover, and you really I'll, I'll go with that. And if you remember, I said to you, "Can you please tell her that I think she's a genius?" And you did, and she went, "Oh, okay, um, great, thanks." <laughs> At number four, Return to Soul, just. Brilliant. Um, again, it's 2022 film originally. Those are both 2022 films, but open here in 2023. And I just thought, really terrific, an incredible story about somebody in search of themselves, but in search of their cultural heritage and told so well. At number three, Ennis Main, absolute masterpiece by Mark Jenkin, an extraordinary follow up, follow up to Bait. The rebirth of Cornish cinema, a film that is made in, in a way that you could only do if you literally lived and breathed the film and the story and such a such a fantastic central performance and a brilliant sound. I think it won, a, it won an award for, I think, Best Sound at the Biffers. Wonderful. Number two, Anatomy of a Fall. Just flawless. I mean, edge of your seat drama that for most of the time is people talking in rooms and yet it's nail biting stuff. Sandra Huller's performance is amazing. The, the boy who plays the son is amazing. Yes. The way in which the, the languages switch to talk about the different things. And at one point when she says, I can't answer this in that language, can I use another language? Because it's so smart. And at number one, I said this at the time and I stick with it, past lives. Celine Song came on the show. She did. And I it was just so, I mean, how brilliant that out of that, you know, you interviewed um, the director one fine morning. You interviewed the director of uh, Past Lives. I've done many interviews with, uh, you know, Mark Jenkins about Ennis Main. I mean, that is a fantastic five films. Now, obviously, you know, we own these things are person, but but look at that list. What you know? How can anyone look at that list and go anything other than wow? Cinema is great. You hit your Christmas did, yeah. balls. I hit there. my balls. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so so that's the top five, and uh, that's a very interesting. And it, you could program that quite happily, couldn't you? You could do that over across the weekend, and yeah. you'd have a very very good time. I also can I add to this? Sorry, um, I realised. Are you I'm, going to do the worst ones? No, in a minute. There are okay. other there are other films that I left off my list of of other things that I thought were great this year. So where do these fit in? It's just they didn't make it into the top five, but they were they're all so great. But the one, so the list. That yeah, you... the list. I mean, there's even more. I realised that I the, the list went further okay. now, which was documentaries the automat which i loved in the court of the crimson king which i loved still a michael j fox film which i loved and then in terms of the blockbusters godzilla minus one creator barbieheimer yes all of it mission impossible dead reckoning part one spider-man across the spider-verse and actually i would include john wick four in (laughs) big blockbuster movies that really earned their keep and just to say in terms of Things coming next year because two of these were mentioned. Poor things, zone of interest, the holdovers, which somebody said, you know, that's officially a next year mm-hmm. release. But so the the greatness continues. And I should say at the beginning, I am less interested now in telling you my worst choices, and there are there are far fewer of them. Just tell us what's in it. Okay, so. I did my the thing about you know listing all the films that I hadn't liked. Okay, it's a much shorter list than eighty for Brady. Who the hell's Brady? I don't care. Luther, The Fallen Son, well, terrible. Like the TV show, Air, and then they licensed a the shoe, the remake of Haunted Mansion. Um, in the sequels, Big Fat Wedding Three, The Nun Two, Fast X, Book Club, the next chapter. Pfft, don't care. Some films that were critical darlings that I didn't care for very much. I didn't like Babylon. I didn't like the whale. The the things that I finally got to the list of the the the, the worst number five Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey, which is a film which a feature film which opens with a promising short film, and then it spends the rest of the, its running time just not doing anything that's good in the short film. Number four Scream Six. That sound you can hear is Wes Craven spinning in his grave, going, "No, I didn't mean that at all." Number three Ant Man Quantum Mania. Ah. The film which, if you remember, I mean, I, you know. I do. If Michael Douglas said the best way to watch Ant- Ant-Man Quantumania was off your face on magic mushrooms. He came on the show, didn't he? He did. <laughs> and the interview and you was... very bravely interviewed him about it. It was quite, it was an entertaining interview. It was. The film was rubbish, wasn't it? It was. It was absolute pants. It was. And it was so cgi that you just kind of, just, uh, just, after a while... You didn't just, care, no. didn't care, didn't care. At number two, Sound of Freedom, a film that proves that Jim Caviezel, having played Jesus, thinks he is Jesus, propaganda porn for QAnon conspiracy theorists and alleged Christians worshipping the devil in the name of God, only much more boring than that sounds. Okay. And at number one, well, take a wild guess. I've got no idea. Exorcist Believer. Oh, I see. A yes, film and <laughs> made by people who have watched The Exorcist but not seen it. I think they made it specifically to come top of your they did. most hated movie. Well done. They did. The you know, hate is a strong word. Okay. You, you said to me the other week, uh, I said, I hate you. And you said, you should really, you know, you've said that twice. And I, I realized that I had. I don't know what was w- weird, that thing. When I was younger, I used to get very, <laughs> very angry about bad films. And I've just lost that now. I don't, I just don't care enough about the bad ones. That's probably a more healthy it is. place to be. I, I, the thing I want everyone to take away from this is bad films are bad films. But there's so many good films. There's so many good films in that which we've case, done this year. In which case, what is your film of the week? Oh, this week? Mm-hmm. Scala! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I loved it to pieces. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? They are. And if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.